Hi and welcome to Kayla's Crafted Creations. Today we're going to create this lovely little card box with uh, just with some gift cards in it. Um, but we're going to do it a little bit different. This one's been done with the Bird Ballad Suite. Um, but I want to make one for a Christmas theme. So this time I'm going to be using very vanilla and the brightly gleaming speciality DSP and some Christmas stamp sets that I've got um, to create this box this time so to begin you're going to need your scoreboard and some pieces of card. First piece of card measures eight and a quarter by five and three quarters. So let me just bring my scoreboard up. And on the long side, you need to score at one and seven and three quarters. Now you can make it a narrower bit but I like it quite a bit to be able to hold on to and then on the short side score at one inch and that's that bit that is all the scoring on that bit of card so that's eight and a quarter by five and three quarters scored at one seven and three quarters and then one on that side then you're going to need a piece of card that measures eight and a quarter by ten and on this one, you're going to score at one, five and three quarters, and six and three quarters. Now turn it to the short side, you're going to score at one, and seven and three quarters. And that's all the scoring done. Let's just get rid of that. So, at this point, you're going to fold and burnish your score lines. So, now these make nice little gifts or you can sell them at your craft fairs. I find that selling something all packaged nicely always goes better than saying just bundled together. Now for this bit we're just going to trim the line straight up the side of that rectangle there. And then slightly notch on the other side. And we're going to go to this side and we're going to go straight up the side of the rectangle. And then we're going to notch our square. Like so. And that is that piece done. So we've notched the square kept the rectangle side straight and we've just slightly notched that one there and i think i'm going to slightly notch that bit there just to make it so it goes together a bit better so that is that bit done now with this one it's slightly different i'm going to fold and burst the score lines let's get rid of that rubbish there fold and burst these score lines here Should have moved that further out of the way. I don't know about many of you, I don't have a big space for crafting. I have a craft room, but I can't really get into it. So I craft at a little table in my living room. And this is where we are today, in my living room. So as you're just, burnishing your score lines, make sure that your lines are all meeting up and they're all straight. 
just don't want wonky lines. Alright, so let's tuck that in there. Alright, so for this one, just like the first one, we're going to notch that bit there very slightly. It doesn't need a lot. And then we're going to straight up the side of the rectangle. And then we're going to go straight up the side of the rectangle on this side. And then we're going to notch into the square. Create the flap, we're going to trim off the entire side down to the second score line. So we've gone past the first score line and down to the second score line. And we're just going to cut that nice and straight, like so. And the same on the other side, we're going to trim down the side of the down the side past the first score line up to the second score line now I'm slightly notching this very slightly so that when it comes to gluing my box together it's a little bit easier now let's move those bits out of the way to create my detail on the on this one I've used an edging trimmer there and one there so I'm going to do exactly the same on there and they're there from the Magnolia, Magnolia memory dies and that is this die here which created this and the other one is from the beamline stitch framelits which is this long one here so i'm gonna very quickly jump off video and run that through the big shop so i'll be seeing you in a second right now i've run those through the die now it leaves a little edge on it so it's just where i've caught it and not quite gone up to the corner so what i like to do with the corners is that I like to round them and I'm using the tri punch. So let's pop that in there, making sure you line it up. It just finishes the corner off nicely. As I say, the die is not quite long enough for this box, but once you've rounded the corner, it actually looks all right. So there's that bit. And for this one, now uh, this die doesn't cut the side, so you end up with this. But luckily enough, it does mark it. Leave, I don't know if you can see, it leaves a little mark that you can follow. So if you just trim down to the line where it comes off and then trim down to that bit there and you're left with that nice patterned edge and we'll just put those dies to one side now remember that from uh, magnolia memory dies and from the stitched beam uh, the be my stitched framelits. It's quite a lovely set that, but it does just finishes the box off nicely. It gives a nice edge rather than just that plain square edge. Now Tombow's out, so I'm having to use um, Beacon Three and One, which is quite a good glue. So we just run some glue down the edge there. Not get my head in the way, am I? And you just line your box up. Now you can quite easily convert this into a little bag. 
by adding a handle but I quite liked it as a gift box for cards uh, rub that on right. just to make sure we've got our square lines uh, our, line, our glue nicely meshed on there and then fold that down like that and we'll glue this, like, this side onto that Now this beaten through in one does dry clear as does Tombow but obviously as we know Tombow is out of stock at the moment so we're having to make do with other glues. I've got a little bit of Tombow left which I'm saving for those moments where you need your little dabs of glue for your done monties and things. So there we go, that's our box shape like that. So starting with your back facing you add a little bit of glue to your flaps and fold your back forward that way when you come to gluing the front there you you don't end up with a seam at the front of your box so just give that a couple of seconds to grasp then we'll add some glue to this that down like so now just to help that grab if you get your bone folder and run from the inside just to help you get the grasp on it like so and then that is your box flat done like that now, decorating. You can decorate in a multitude of ways, um, however you feel you like. But today I'm going to use copper, um, for copper foil sheets, and the brightly gleaming speciality DSP because I quite like the idea of the copper colour. So what I'm going to do going to grab a piece of this now I did the fancy shape on the first one the stitched nested stitch dies but this time I'm going to do a square pattern on there so I'm, I'm changing it just slightly just because I think it would look better with this um, design so I'm going to need the box itself or the flap itself measures six and three quarters by three and a quarter but I need to bring that up a little bit so I'd say three and one eighth so I'm going to make that two and seven eighths by six and a half and I'm just going to trim that Two 
two and seven eighths. This card is gorgeous, lovely thick card. I just need to open that up now, just move that out of the way. It's very difficult not to bring your head over when you're filming. I have to keep correcting myself, so it's two and a quarter or six and a half, and that should sit on there quite nicely. Yeah, that'll do. I'm going to round those corners in a second, but I'm also going to trim my DSP down. And for this, DS, uh, for this front, of all the DSPs now, I'm going to show you all the DSPs that are here, because they are gorgeous. You get two of each design, you get two of that design, two of the ornaments design, two of this design, two of this one, I like the pretty peacock one. Two of the Mossy Meadow, and obviously back to the Night of Navy there. But for the purposes of this box, we're actually going to use the, the ornaments one. Just grab one of those. Cut that to two and five eighths. By six and a quarter. Just bring that in there. Same with the uh, copper foil sheet. using your glue because you're working on copper foil you need to use your wet glue now I use a lot of wet glue because it bonds the fibres but you could use snail or dimensionals even like to give it a bit of shape but what I want to do in a minute just to give this a bit of a lift is to out of the little bit that I cut is to cut a few of the ornaments out by hand and stick them on dimensional just to give it a bit of lift. Right, so that's that. Bring back your box and that will go on there like so. Get your glue again. Always takes longer to come out when you're on video. This is my first actual YouTube video, so I'm 
I'm hoping you like it and I'm not waffling too much. Try and be as quick as possible as well. I know people don't like long videos. And I'm going to do the cards in a separate video so you can pick and choose which bit you want to watch. If you want to watch the cards being made or just the box. There we go. And that is the box done like that. You see? It's on there like so. As I said, I want to cut a fussy cut a couple of these out using my scissors. A fussy cutting isn't for everybody. I've also got a, di uh, a scan and cut that would cut this out for me. But fussy cutting for just a couple of bits is ideal. I mean, I may send this bit through the scan and cut anyway, just to get all the ornaments off of it. But for now, fussy cutting is the quickest way for me to, to have done this. The fact that I only want three ornaments just to lay at the side of my of my box, just to give it a bit of shape. There we go. Those. Now, where's my dimensionals? Where did I put them? She says. So I found my uh, dimensionals. They were hiding as per normal. And what I'm going to do is just where I see these, I'm just going to pop my dimensionals. Just to give a bit of depth to what would be a very plain... So just a little bit of depth. I'm using my pickup tool because it makes it life a lot easier. pointy end of this you've got multiple ends that you can use but I like the pointy end so I like my uh, take your pick like this is take your pick tool the there we go let's pop that there so that makes that and we'll add a few uh, diamonds from the noble peacock range because I quite like these and they've got the green and the noble peacock the old olive mossy meadow so I can't get into the packet but I want what I want Stuff 
few of these around. to give it a bit of a sparkle okay so a little bit of something to it put that to one side put that over there I'm going to bark up I'm going to my daughter turning up now just to make the closure, I've used Velcro dots. Now these Velcro dots are losing their stickiness, so what I do, I just add a bit of glue to the back. stick it where I want it give that a minute to go off just give that a minute then a bit of glue on there This is where it gets a bit tricky because I have to line my box up where I want it, touch it down so I can see where the glue is. Oh, it's not what I want to happen. and stick that where it touched down there now with this glue the thing about this glue is you can clear up little stragglers little straggly lines of glue that you get it does come off and just pop it down push it down like that so and that is your box made now I'm going to do a second video on the cards that I'm going to make and I hope you like the box in my creative mess and that you enjoy making one for yourself it's a very, very simple box but it makes a nice change to have, box, have your cards given out in a nice box so that is the box and I will be back with part two with the cards